Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is February 3rd, and our fourth hidden figure is Freddie Washington, who has been a highly, highly, highly requested hidden figure. A lot of you guys have wanted to see Freddie Washington. So, actress Freddie Washington was born Frederica Carolyn Washington on December 23rd, 1903 in Savannah, Georgia, to Robert T. Washington, a postal worker, and Harriet Ward Washington, a dancer. The oldest of five, Freddie, as she was nicknamed, and her siblings were raised by their grandmother after their mother died when Freddie was 11. When her father remarried, she and her sister were sent to a convent school in Pennsylvania where Washington studied theater and dramatic writing. At 16, Washington moved to Harlem to live with her grandmother and aunt. She worked as a bookkeeper for the Black American record company Black Swan, and three years later got a part as a chorus dancer in the all-black Broadway musical Shuffle Along, which also featured Josephine Baker. She toured as a chorus dancer with the show for four years, making enough money to support her entire family. In 1926, she landed her first theater role acting opposite Paul Robeson in Black Boy. Soon after her debut, she moved abroad to Europe for more acting opportunities and toured France, Germany, and England, often under the stage name of Edith Warren. Washington returned to the U.S. in 1928, acting on stage and in screen productions, including the movie Black and Tan Fantasy with Duke Ellington in 1929. In 1934, she starred as what is considered her breakout role in Imitation of Life as Piola, a black American woman passing for white. Her role was met with critical acclaim and the movie was nominated for numerous Academy Awards, yet there was still a lack of roles for black actors, and as Washington's profile grew, she was often approached to pass in real life and play a white woman on film. Washington refused to pass for a white actress in order to lead movie roles and became outspoken in her civil rights advocacy of roles for black Americans in Hollywood. Both of her parents were black Americans. They were just lighter skinned black Americans. Her and all four of her siblings were also lighter skinned. She was a founding member of the Negro Actors Guild of America, which works for better working conditions and better opportunities for black American actors. And from 1937 to 1938, she served as the organization's secretary. Quitting Hollywood to focus solely on theater work and activism, Washington moved back to New York to serve as the administrative secretary for the Joint Actors Equity Theater League Committee on Hotel Accommodations for Negro Actors throughout the United States. Washington was also an active member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I don't know if you guys can hear my neighbor's dogs barking, but they're barking. Later in life, she also became a film and theater critic, writing reviews for black American newspapers and serving as drama editor for The People's Voice, a New York Weekly newspaper founded by Adam Clayton Powell Jr., Harlem. Washington was also utilized as a consultant for the casting process of many films and plays with racial themes, and in 1953, she was the film casting consultant for Carmen Jones, starring Dorothy Dandridge. Washington also consulted on casting for George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. In 1975, she was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame. Washington later contracted Alzheimer's and eventually died of a stroke on June 28, 1994, in Stamford, Connecticut, at the age of 90 years old. In 2005, Imitation of Life was inducted into the United States National Film Registry and it has also been named one of the 25 most important films on race by Time Magazine. In 1945, when speaking on the concept of passing, Washington said, You see, I'm a mighty proud gal and I can't for the life of me find any valid reason why anyone should lie about their origin or anything else for that matter. Frankly, I do not ascribe to the stupid theory of white supremacy and to try to hide the fact that I am a Negro for economic or any other reasons. If I do, I would be agreeing that to be a Negro makes me inferior and that I have swallowed whole hog all of the propaganda dished out by our fascist-minded white citizens. Freddie Washington, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links and other information in the description box. 
Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.